Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. It's a blessing to welcome all of you from around our Episcopal Diocese of Southwestern Virginia and beyond on this celebration of the Nativity of our Lord from our diocesan house. We pray that this worship may be nourishing to your soul in this time when we continue to be physically separated from each other, and that it may give you the assurance that God is present with you in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you caused this holy day to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arms before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm is Psalm 98. We will read it responsibly by the half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. Has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. The lands and those who dwell therein. But the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples with equity. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, 
which enlightens everyone which coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the newborn Prince of Peace, who gives us minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. Amen. Amen. This week I received a Christmas card from Bishop Nick Baines in our Companion Diocese of Leeds in England. It was an emailed card. So it took me a moment to take in the image on my phone. It's a drawing that appears at first to contain a traditional image of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in a small manger. A closer look reveals that Mary and Joseph, dressed in their usual robes, are also wearing surgical masks. At this point, especially the way it is drawn, I figured it was a clever cartoon and I searched for a punchline or something funny drawn in the image. Instead, an even closer look reveals that instead of wise men surrounding the baby in the manger, there are three different healthcare workers in scrubs and masks. They each clearly represent frontline healthcare workers, the heroes of this pandemic. And then in the foreground, there is a long, socially distanced line of ordinary people of all sorts and conditions, a young woman, an old man with a cane, a pregnant woman, and over them all is a clear blue night sky full of stars with one large bright star over the little barn. And in the center of the image, right in front of the manger scene where the procession begins, is a sign that reads, God is with us. So this Christmas card from Leeds is not merely a clever depiction of these difficult times that we are living through. It also carries the central meaning of this day. Right in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all the sickness and death around the world, all the political upheaval, in the middle of all of our confusions, anxieties, and even frustrations, God is with us, Emmanuel. And just so, St. John begins his account of God's Messiah coming into our world. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The opening of John's Gospel, which is the other reading assigned for this day, when we celebrate Jesus' nativity, is not exactly a Christmas story like Luke's account of angels and shepherds and Mary with her newborn baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. No, John's account is instead how it begins. It is about the mysterious and powerful way that God chooses to transform us and creation. Through God's Holy Spirit, the eternal Word is born into our lives, flesh of our flesh, to walk alongside us as a fellow human being. Astounding. Now the opening of John's Gospel is not a sentimental one. It does not imagine Jesus' incarnation magically erasing all the varying levels of darkness that we encounter, either individually or corporately. With everything this pandemic has put us and people around the world through this past year, it is understandable and it is even tempting to say that these are some of the darkest days in recent history. They certainly are not. 
Many even refer over and over to this long viral season as being unprecedented. It isn't. Throughout our common history, ever since Christ was born, people have undergone years and years of sickness, famine, alienation, and violence. And the church has been present in every moment. And the Holy Spirit has guided us in every moment. Jesus was born into a world that was occupied by the cruel oppression of a Roman occupation. It was a world of injustice, slavery, and poverty. A world that for so many held very little hope. And right from the start, John's Gospel foreshadows the love and the hate, the hope and the despair, the darkness and the light that Jesus would confront as God's Messiah. He was in the world, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. Jesus is born into the world to enter into the depths, the very depths of our human longing and suffering. And after this dark year, as people who would follow him this Christmas should afford us a deeper reflection. Regardless of the many ways that this year has disrupted and shaken us, my own father died of the virus at the beginning of this year, the whole season of Christmas offers us a time to embrace hope anew and to take stock of the many blessings that we do have. Whatever the trouble, Whatever the hardship that we have endured during this past year of this pandemic, as a people and as a country, we must be sober in our recognition and our awareness that most of it is what many of God's children endure regularly and for longer periods of time. As we sheltered in place, many around the world had no place to shelter in. As we felt confined, Many are in prison, some for much longer than they should be. As we missed going out to restaurants to eat, food insecurity and hunger is a, the reality for too many. As we struggle with the grief of pain and death, we pray for and remember that many people constantly face famine, sickness, and violent death in war-torn and impoverished places all over the world. If we were only to put our trust in the political and economic systems of the world, we might have plenty of reason for despair and anxiety. But we set our hope on Christ, his love, his peace. The Reverend Michael Maine, a great spiritual writer and a former dean of Westminster Abbey wrote this, to celebrate Christmas, is to refuse to let ourselves be dragged down by the surrounding darkness. It is to renew our hope and our trust in the God revealed in Jesus Christ, the light that shines in the darkness and which that darkness will not and cannot overcome. As we measure out the many blessings that we have here at the end of this year, we will be more and more able to respond to our neighbors with renewed compassion and understanding. In the midst of darkness, we can put our hope and trust in the light of Jesus. What are our blessings? What can we pray and hope for in the year to come for ourselves and for others? How can we be part of the healing and the re reconciliation that the world sorely needs? The card from Bishop Nick in the Diocese of Leeds prayer, which reads, May the light of Christ be with you and your family this Christmas and throughout 2021. I wish the same for this Diocese of Southwestern Virginia and for all of our neighbors who we are called to serve. Let us as the baptized children of the light renew our commitment to be light to others. Light of life, you came in flesh, 
born into human pain and joy, and gave us power to be your children. Grant us faith, O Christ, to see your presence among us, so that all creation may sing new songs of gladness and walk in the way of peace. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for prayers of the people. Wonderful Counselor, whose glory is beyond our understanding and whose love is beyond measure, let us know your presence now. Mighty God, whose power girds creation, whose hands cradle the hills, yet whose mercy is boundless, let us know your presence now. Prince of Peace, whose righteousness is like the strong mountains, and whose justice is as the great deep, let us know your presence now. Emmanuel, whose property it is always to have mercy, and whose arm is long to save, we lift before you now all those people on our hearts and minds, praying silently or aloud. All those committed to parish prayer lists around our diocese. For Bill. For Michael. For Melissa. Prayers for Stephen and Emily. Mom and Dad. Hold all those we love in your unbounded love. Make us your healing presence in the world. Loving word of God, you have shown us the fullness of your glory in taking human flesh. Fill us in our bodily life with your grace and truth, that our pleasures may be boundless and our integrity complete. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I'll start with you. In just a moment, we'll put on the screen a place where you might make an offering to our St. Nicholas Day Fund. It benefits our, our Appalachian Service Ministry of Grace House on the Mountain. And we've been collecting it all through Advent, and it'll help us do projects for people in Appalachia whose ramps and other kinds of repairs to their homes were not able to be done because of the pandemic. So again, there will be a, a slide that will show you when you can give, either today or, or sometime during Christmas tide. The Holy Eucharist now continues with the Great Thanksgiving. And on normal Sunday in our parishes, after the bread and wine of the Eucharist is consecrated, and before we go forward, we each have a moment of personal prayer time as we prepare to receive the sacrament. So this afternoon, at the time of communion, I invite you into that time of prayer to make your desire to spiritually receive communion known to Jesus, and he will be present to you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son, his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. By the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for you an everlasting life. My Lord and my God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the peace of the newborn Son of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.